to another race analysis video. I'm really excited to share this one with you. This is round two of the 2024 Super Series. We're at the Tail and Bend Motorsport Park. This race is nine laps of this circuit. Uh, and as you can see, we're just going over the start-finish line now for the supercars. Um, it's the full GT circuit, so it's kind of cool to be able to race on this. The bitumen is absolutely perfect, um, even if it's a little bit of a boring course because it's designed for, for cars, not for bikes. Um, it was a really windy day today. There was sort of 30 to 40 k an hour winds for most of the day, going left to right uh, as, you, as you look at this footage now. Um, with gusts up to sort of 50 or 60 k an hour. So it was definitely a race for some of the bigger guys. Uh, the smaller guys on our team were definitely getting blown around a bit. At this point in the race, we only had three guys left. Uh, we'd only turned up today with four. Uh, round one happened earlier in the morning, which was a team time trail, one lap around this course. Um, because we only had four guys, we kind of took it pretty easy. We weren't looking for a result. Um, and so the four of us were pretty fresh. Um, this is just the beginning of lap two. There's a prime sprint at the end of this lap, and we have an ambition to lead out one of our guys for this sprint. Um, now, in this session, there were actually four races on the road all at the same time. Um, we've all got green numbers on our backs. We've also got the elite men, the Cat 1 men, and the elite women all on course. So we're a bit further into that lap, and we're on a really tricky part of the course because we're going down a steep downhill with a raging tailwind. Uh, and just as you see two guys disappearing up the road a little bit, we come around this corner. Um, and because you've been going downhill, downwind really quickly, and you come around the corner, you get suddenly hit with a massive crosswind. Um, and this is where a few people actually crashed, or at least came off the course during the TTT. Um, so this stretch of the course then goes uh, after that corner into a reasonably punchy little uphill and I can see in the distance two guys are going up the road. Now I'm not concerned at all about two guys in terms of the overall win, but given that we're now on a prem lap and one of our team's goals was to get the prem points, I was certainly just keeping an eye on them. And we've been passed by the Cat 1 men at this point, and it's clear that I'm not the only person worried about those two guys up the road. You can see Lachlan Turnock in the, uh, the green Team Everything Bikes kit and the ProSen Air helmet waving his team through to get on the front to chase him down. And of course that suits me, because if another team wants to close that gap, then none of us have to do any work. And uh, rather pleasantly, I get a nice toe from Lachlan all the way up to the front, uh, the front of this race. Now I'm on the leeward side here, so I'm getting as, you know, as much protection as I just about can. Uh, and then Lachlan looks like he's going to try to close this thing down all on his own. And I'm about a bike length too far back, so I'm not really on his wheel. And at that point I decide to not you know, close it myself, um, and I pull up and let someone else do some of the work here. So I give it about a minute, um, the gap's starting to grow, uh, and I'm also conscious that we're in about 3 k's from that prem sprint. So a gap opens up in front of me and I give it some beans and decide that I'm going to get across by myself. Um, and I do, I manage to bridge this uh, solo. Um, for whatever reason, I think we were coming into a tailwind section, so I managed to get a good gap really quickly. Um, and they obviously weren't pushing too hard into the tailwind section up ahead because I was able to close up to them pretty quickly. Now, annoyingly, uh, just as I got across to this little break, um, Frank uh, in the Nord blue colours and James Lang in the hold fast kit, uh, they started to let a bit of a gap go out, and obviously I'm not keen to close another gap after I've just bridged across from the bunch. And um, fortunately, I do have a we do have a really good gap. Um, looking back at when I did attack, um, there was hold fast, there was Norwood, and there was Team Everything Bikes, um, all blocking up the front, so they were definitely going to discourage anyone um, from going with me. So I was lucky to get a gap uh, through the middle of them, but once I did get away from them, they weren't going to chase because each of them has at least one rider up in the break. So anyway, I do eventually bridge up to Lachlan and uh, number 85, Gerhard Prinsloo from Hold Fast. Uh, and it looks like the other two guys, Frank and James, have drifted back into the bunch. Now coming into this headwind section, I can see that there's three of us, we've got a decent gap, um, and we're far enough away from the finish line that I want to do some work. Uh, I want this group of three be to stay away, because if this three does stay away, uh, we're going to keep all the points in the sprints competition. Now we're actually joined by two more, so we're five in this little break. But again, I'm pretty confident to sprint from a group of five, so I'm going to roll the dice here. Now here, um, Lachlan's pulled a turn, and then he swings 
<laughs> pretty aggressively off the front. And that leaves these two guys from Hold Fast, sorry, from JKT Racing. Uh, number 85, which is Gerhard Prinsloo, and 83, Jake Nesbitt. Um, these two guys do a phenomenal amount of work. Um, although I should say, uh, Gerhard does most of this, and it's pretty clear who they're working for um, in the sprint. And um, I'll spoil the race by saying that Jake Nesbitt, number 83 here, gets the win uh, at the end of the day uh, after nine laps. But I'm not too worried about that. Um, I'm in a group of five. I've got less than a kilometre from the sprint and I'm sitting third wheel, um, and I'm absolutely loving life. And I mean, you can see how strong the wind is. I'm riding almost 45 degrees off the side, um, and as we come around into this headwind, uh, there's a very slight rise here, but it's not much. In fact, then it drops into a downhill, and I'm doing 300 plus watts sitting in the draft at you know 35k an hour or so. Now, of some concern, we've now got the bunch, uh, or at least some people from the bunch who have managed to bridge across to us, but um, I'm not too worried about them. They don't seem too eager to come through to the front and really drive the pace. And since Gerhard's been pulling pretty strongly on the front here, anyone who has made it across has had to be doing a whole lot of work. Um, now at this point, um, I, I often get this corner wrong. Um, uh, and you'll see that in the last, you know, five, six hundred meters of a sprint, what am I doing sitting on the front? Um, well, the first thing was I didn't have any teammates, and so keeping my position was entirely my own responsibility. Um, and I was worried that if I did go back one or two wheels, I did risk getting um, pushed off into the grass with this left-right wind. Um, and so I gutted at myself and just held a fairly steady watt. Uh, Jake launched early. I went after him, and I had a good long sprint. This was some of my best power numbers all season, um, but he was just too strong, had too much of a gap. Uh, and I rolled over the line in second for the sprint. Uh, Lachlan Turnick in the green behind me uh, came in third. Um, and I thought at this point that it was all going to come back together. Um, since, since the bunch had effectively made its way back to us, I thought that was going to be it. Um, but what happened instead is that when things did sort of settle down a little bit, we actually only had a group of about 12. So things settled down a little bit. We had four guys from Team Everything Bikes in the green. Um, and they looked like they were pretty willing to work. So I was going to work with them because at this point, um, I could see that the group was fairly small. Um, I thought it was smaller than it ended up being, but uh, even so, there was a big chunk of the group behind, um, and so I was willing to put in some effort um, and try to drive the group. Uh, and as I let myself fall backwards through the group a little bit to see who was there, um, I could see we had uh, Team Everything Bikes, we had Hold Fast, we had JKT, we had Norwood. Um, these are all the big teams who, uh, who, who might be keen to chase something down, but with people up the front, they weren't going to be chasing. Um, it pretty well, pretty soon became clear that only a few people were interested in actually pushing on. And you can see there's about four or five guys up the front and then there's a bit of a gap behind. Uh, that group behind eventually chases back on but then doesn't do any work at all. Uh, and it sets up this really interesting dynamic in the group where you've got maybe five guys who are willing to work and then a bunch of people who aren't. Then we sort of got into this cycle where someone would be doing a, a solid turn on the front but then no one would come past him. Um, and there were points where like there'd be a guy sitting second wheel uh, this, this guy in particular, Max Bush, he ended up coming second on the end of the, at the end of the day. He was a solo rider, um, and so I have absolutely no issue with him not pulling at all, but he would just sit second wheel and wouldn't pull through um, and really just disrupted the, the break. Um, and I couldn't figure out why, because he had no teammates back in the bunch coming up to help. There were other people who were willing to do the work, but he just disrupted it by sitting that second wheel and I mean, obviously it worked for him, he did come second, but uh, at this point in the race, it wasn't clear that this was the break that was going to stick. Um, and in my mind, uh, at that point, what you've got to do is either get on the front and drive it, or get out of the way and let other people. So Team Everything Bikes here had been doing a lot of work, uh, and no one was coming around him, so I had a bit of a go. Just yelled at them that we're at the front of the race, so, you know, with still six laps of this race to go, this isn't the time for cat and mousing. Um, and the response to my, you know, pretty limp 300 watt threshold effort, this isn't a, an attack, but I'm just rolling off the front because no one is pulling through. Now there's no way in hell I'm going on with this by myself for six more laps, so I pull the pin myself, but uh, given that I didn't know how far behind the bunch was, this felt so stupid to just be rolling, you know, zone two at the front of a race with 40 k's to go. So here again, Benook in the Butterfields kit on the right has just pulled a turn. Um, and then the two guys from 
JKT uh, and Max Bush in the sort of grey pink kit uh, just sort of roll around. Someone from Team Everything Bikes comes through uh, and starts trying to drive the pace and those same three guys just slot in behind and just will not come around and pull a turn. They just slot in behind the guy who's doing the work uh, and then just let him hang out there on the front to drive. The Team Everything Bikes guy on the front you know, slows down, the pace comes out, another Team Everything Bikes comes through uh, and we repeat this process. Anyone gonna go with that? Throw a bit of shade, ask if anyone's going to go with that. Uh, Zane Espy's obviously getting as pissed off as I am uh, and I make what's probably a pretty stupid error uh, and I go for it. Um, I figure if Zane's willing to put in some work, I don't know Zane at this point, uh, I don't know how strong he is but you know he's in the front group in a break uh, in a Cat 2 men's road race so he's obviously strong enough. Uh, I have a few words with him on the way past uh, and we get working. Apparently that stung a few people into action and they uh, they did close that one down uh, but that was definitely the the modus operandi for the rest of this little bit of the race. Although actually it looks like Lachlan closed that one down, uh, closed his own teammate down which is a bit funny. Anyway we piss around for a bit longer. Uh, Zane uh, makes a joke about this being you know bloody e-grade uh, and then he decides to go. I see him going up the left um, and again I'm pissed off with how slow this is going so I go with him. Um, and I'll look, I'll be the first to admit this isn't my strongest most searing attack ever um, but even so with just sort of four or five hundred watts um, we roll off the front of this group. Um, Zane's doing some fantastic effort on the front uh, and to start with you can see that Binook in the Butterfields kit is doing the chasing behind uh, and it looks like he's going to close it down but when he pulls off uh, and it's left to the two JKT guys uh, or anyone else um, the pace goes right out of the chase. Um, I come round for my turn and I'm, you know, I'm only sitting at like 110%. Um, I'm not going uh, all out, um, although it is, you know, coming into sort of a tricky corner of the course because of the wind. But you know, this isn't a massive attack. This isn't huge, but we are just pulling out time um, on that group. So now there's 10 guys behind us. There's two of us at the front of the race. Um, Zane, it turns out, is quite a strong time trialist, um, which is great. I'm a sprinter, which is not great. And we have five and a half laps of this, or well, five laps of this course left to go, another 40 k's. Uh, but as I was yelling to everybody else, we're at the front of the race now. Um, it's really up to us how we race it. Zane was committed, I was committed, and so that's how we went on. Anyway, for the next uh, 10 k's or so, Zane and I worked really well together. Um, and then for the next five k's after that, Zane worked really well while I did everything I could just to try to hang on to his back wheel. Uh, unfortunately, uh, two laps later we were caught and, and not much uh, longer after that my cameras ran out of battery. Um, but the rest of the race was pretty uneventful. Um, I started cramping up with one lap to go. Uh, it only it, it stayed back with the, the 12 of us. Um, once Zane had recovered, he did some strong turns on the front, uh, pulling for his sprinter Lachlan Turnock. Um, he then dropped himself back to the main bunch. I think he still finished uh, finished in the main bunch. Uh, but coming into the last lap, we had about a three minute gap. Uh, I played the lazy sprinter card for the rest of this race. Um, I sat in wherever I could and saved as much energy as I could. Unfortunately, with, uh, with cramps coming in both my quads and my left hammy, um, I didn't really have a whole lot for the finish. I managed to stay in a really good position. Uh, I was surfing on what, was, uh, what I thought was the Team Everything's bikes sprint train. Um, so I thought Tomo was being led out uh, by uh, by whoever was left, but it turns out they were going for Lachlan, who was on the other side of the race. Um, managed to come through. Uh, I, I cramped up so badly in the last sprint, but I kept sprinting. Came in for seventh behind uh, Binook. Uh, number 83, Jake Nesbitt, the guy who'd been sitting in uh, behind his teammate for most of the last sort of five laps of the race. He won the race by a country mile. He just had a sprint that was... You know, absolutely unreal. Max Bush, the solo rider in the grey and pink kit, um, he'd obviously done no work all race and you know neither should he. Uh, he came in for second. Lockett and Turnock came third. Um, I thought he was super strong today in that um, ridiculous looking Pro Sen Air helmet uh, and socks that are definitely not road legal. Uh, so I was a bit disappointed not to come away with a bit more of a result than that but I raced aggressively um, which is a bit different from me. Normally I will just sit in in this sort of race and do as little as possible all race. Uh, so I raced aggressively, I got a good workout in and uh, to be honest, racing in those conditions, that really gusty, windy uh, conditions, actually gave me a bit of confidence for the Kadena Road Race, or the gravel race. 
Uh, so hopefully I'll be able to last more than the first half a lap in that race. Anywho, I hope you enjoyed this long one. We'll see you in the next one. Bye for now.